Yo what's going on guys Tanmay here for Simple Snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on network security and today's topic is going to be output feedback algorithm mode So in the previous few videos that is the last 3 videos in this network security playlist we've been covering different algorithm modes individually starting from the basic electronic code book then we covered cipher block chaining and then we also covered cipher feedback mode So this is like the fourth type of algorithm mode in this playlist so if you have missed any of the previous videos you can check out this playlist i'll drop the link in the video description and you can also see a card so coming back to today's topic let's start off with output feedback algorithm mode so as you can see on the screen on the right hand side we have the complete diagram of the entire working process and on the left we have a little bit of theory so we'll read a little bit of theory and then we'll see the entire process step by step If you've seen the previous video that is cipher feedback mode pretty much everything in the diagram is going to be similar to cipher feedback except the yellow feedback line which you can see in this diagram that is the only major difference between cipher feedback and output feedback so anyways we'll come to that but we'll first read a little bit of theory on output feedback mode so OFB that is output feedback mode is extremely similar to CFB that is cipher feedback as i mentioned and the only difference is that in the case of CFB that is cipher feedback the cipher text is fed into the next stage of encryption process so let me just show you what the difference is so as you can see this blue dotted line so this is what happens in cipher feedback mode that we saw in the previous video that is the cipher text j bits of the first iteration is fed back into the shift register into the iv for the next iteration so this is that blue dotted line which is acting as a feedback mechanism but in output feedback this is not happening in output feedback you can see this line that is this yellow feedback this is where the feedback is actually happening and that is the only difference basically in these two feedback modes but if you haven't seen the cipher feedback it's okay we are going to see this output feedback right from the start and we are going to see the individual steps that happen so in case of ofb the output of the iv encryption process is fed in the next stage of encryption process so this is what they are trying to say when the iv is encrypted that's when it is fed back to the next iv okay so the j bits from the first iv are shifted to the rightmost side of the original iv okay so i'll i'll try to explain to you step by step in a minute so in this mode data is encrypted in units that are smaller than the actual defined block so if the defined block size is 64 bit the actual encryption of the plain text happens in smaller chunks that is 8 bits or 16 bits or 24 bits so that's why you can see that j j bits is considered so this j is going to take account which is going to be less than the fixed size and ofv mode works with j bits at a time as we have seen in the cfv mode so this was a little bit of theory now let's try to understand step by step what exactly happens in this entire encryption process okay so step number 1 we take the initialization vector now if you don't know what is initialization vector it is just a random string of bits which is used to add more randomness in the encryption process okay so if the block size is defined as 64 bits then this iv is also going to be 64 bits and this key would also be 64 bits okay so this sizes are predefined and as i mentioned this iv is just going to be used to add more randomness so along with the key you also have something which makes the encryption more random and difficult to crack by the hackers okay so what we are doing in step number 1 is we are taking this initialization vector and we are encrypting this iv using the key okay so this private key is used for encrypting the iv and not the plain text okay so that's the difference over here then we get the encrypted iv okay so this is where we have reached now from step number 1 we've got the encrypted iv right we took the iv we encrypted it using the key and this is the place we've reached now so let's see what is step number 2 So step number 2 is we take first j bits of the encrypted iv so let's try to understand this first j bits concept okay let's say the block size we've defined it as 8 okay so i'm just going to write some random bits of iv over here so 10100011 so this is the iv that we took initially okay then we encrypted it using the key so we got some new value let's consider it as 111 10101 now let's say we are encrypting four bits at a time okay so this j value we are assuming as 
So when I say first j bits of the encrypted IV, I am trying to say these four bits. Okay, we are taking these four bits of the encrypted IV. We are taking first j bits of the plain text. So j bits again means four bits of the plain text, and we are performing an XOR operation between the two, and then we are getting cipher text block one, which is of j bits, which is again four bits. So we've reached our cipher text, and we've got four bits of cipher text in the first iteration. because we are encrypting four bits at a time because j value is 4 so now let's see what happens at step number 3 okay so this is the step number 3 what is happening is we have to perform left shift of iv by j positions okay so this was our iv that we took initially right so let me just first write it down or let me just mark some spaces so i'm going to say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 so we have eight places because our iv size is 8 so what i'm doing is i'm just writing down the original iv which is 1 0 1 1 0011 okay so this was our original iv but at step number 3 what we are doing is we are performing left shift iv by j positions now j we have assumed as 4 right so we have to left shift the iv by four positions so this is our iv now we have to perform left shift by four positions which means this is how we go ahead and shift the iv so what exactly is happening is we are eliminating the first four bits from the left hand side so this is the left shift operation so this we did on the iv that we have taken initially and the second step in step number 3 is move j bits of encrypted iv into the rightmost side of iv1 that is the original iv so we got an encrypted iv over here remember so what it is saying is move j bits of the encrypted iv into the rightmost side of iv so j bits means 4 bits so this was the encrypted iv that we got that is 4 times 1 0 1 0 1 right so when we move 4 bits we start from the left side and we move these values over here so these 4 times 1 comes over here and this is going to be the new iv which is again going to be encrypted by the key then we get the result we take j bits we perform xor operation with the j bits of plain text we get cipher text 2 and this process continues with the third step also so this is that entire process of encryption that is happening these are the three steps which happen at every iteration and now i hope you have a good idea about what exactly it means by shifting of the iv by j positions using the shift register so you can see that every time the iv is going to be different right at every iteration initially it was 10110011 now it is 00 and 6 time 1 so for next time it is again going to be something else because we are shifting iv every time by four places that is by j places depending upon what the size of j is and what the size of the initial block is so it can be 64 blocks but for simplicity purpose we have assumed it as eight blocks so this makes the encryption more powerful and more random and it's not easy to decrypt the messages now coming back to the difference between this and the cipher feedback as i mentioned the only difference is here the encrypted iv itself is being shifted into the next iteration whereas in the cipher feedback we were taking the cipher text from the previous step and we were feeding j bits of the cipher text into the iv right so that is the only difference now if you are wondering how the decryption goes i'm not going to get into a very lot of detail because then i can actually create a separate video on just the decryption but logically what happens is exactly the reverse process of encryption happens in decryption basically if you just reverse these arrows you'll get the reverse process that is you take the cipher text you xor it with the j bits of encrypted iv and you'll get back the plain text then you right shift the register and not left shift it so when we were doing left shift we were moving the bits this side but in reverse process we have to move it in the right side right then you perform the right shift and you get back the previous iv and then you perform decryption of the next iteration or next step So I hope you understand this output feedback mode and how the encryption happens and the three different steps that happen at every iteration and what exactly shift register is doing and also the difference between output feedback and cipher feedback. So that's it for this video guys. If you like this video, if you understood the concept, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments how this video was. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel guys, make sure you subscribe so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video and for that you can also turn on the notifications. So thanks for watching guys I'll see you guys in the next video peace